If you're looking for the fastest way to get into real estate photography or improve the look of your listings, this is the way to do it. In this tutorial, we're gonna be talking about the basics of real estate photography to get you started down the path of creating better real estate images. My name is Mike Kelly and I'm a photographer based in Los Angeles, California. Over the last 10 years, I have grown my business from photographing some of the cheapest real estate in the San Fernando Valley of Los Angeles to photographing some of the most incredible homes on planet Earth. Some other tutorials I've made for professional photographers are 15, 18 hours long and go way into depth on very specific topics. That is not the goal with this tutorial. We wanna teach you professional techniques to get you creating great images as quickly and efficiently as possible. The exciting thing about this tutorial is it's not just for photographers, it's for real estate agents, it's for homeowners that are just trying to rent a space in their house. And of course, it's also for people who just wanna take better photos of interior spaces. There's nothing else in real estate sales or rentals that will have as big of an impact as great photography. You can add tens of thousands of dollars, if not more, to a sale. And you can have an Airbnb that gets rented just a few times a month go to a blockbuster sellout year round by having great photographs for it. I want to drill into your head the importance of making sure that your camera is perfectly level, parallel with the floor on pretty much every single photograph you take. That's gonna give your vertical lines, those, the walls, the joints in the wall, everything in the home is going to look nice and plumb. It's gonna look like it was built correctly and designed correctly. If you start tilting the camera forward and backwards, those vertical lines, the pillars, the walls, everything supporting the home is gonna look like it was either constructed improperly, designed poorly, or the house is so old that it's falling over. The great thing about real estate photography is that it's needed in almost every location in the world. Somebody is always selling a property or trying to rent a property wherever you are right now. Properties that might pay a photographer two to $400 to shoot and you can knock it out in less than an hour, those jobs are everywhere. And so if you're interested in getting into this type of photography professionally, I think this is one of the more easy genres to jump into. It is unbelievable how many awful pictures I see of amazing spaces. You know how quickly you click away from listings that have bad photos, whether it's a hotel, an Airbnb, or a home for sale. Why would you do that to your own listing? The goal for every photograph that we're going to take in this tutorial is to get this home sold or rented. So in every image, we've got to think like a potential buyer or renter and show what's important to them without any extraneous information. All right, so here's my first composition. The problem is 30% of the photograph is ceiling and 30% is floor. The things that people are going to care about when they buy a house are so small in the frame as to be almost insignificant. If I zoom in, to about 24 millimeters and take a shot, here's how it looks. The important things take up much more of the frame. We see more realistically the size of the room and you have a better idea of how everything in the room fits together. Mike Kelly has shot some of the most expensive properties around the world and he's also taught literally thousands of photographers. So I have no doubt you're gonna learn everything that you need to get started in this field. Three years ago, I converted my bonus room into an Airbnb. Our Airbnb is pretty much booked solid and I think it's because of two things, which is the photography and the design. But at the end of the day, the design doesn't matter if you don't have good pictures that show it off well. If you have cheap looking photographs on your listings, you have no idea how much money you're losing every single year. Spend a little bit of money, update those photos, and I guarantee you, you will be able to raise those rates. For most of this tutorial, we're gonna use available light. That is light that is either natural or from additional lighting sources in the homes or photographing. We're also gonna do a little bit of additional light where we add flash to give those pictures just a little bit more of a professional zing. So there's one last thing I wanna show you. We've been adding light inside. What if we took this flash outside and simulated a cool sunrise or sunset photograph it had beautiful, nice, natural light streaming in through the windows. The main takeaway here is that in these darker, tricky spaces, you have a ton of options to make great photographs, whether using only natural, only the practical lights, or adding artificial light into your photographs. You can put all these together to come up with endless options for post-processing your photos in your own style. Think about when you travel to a new location and you need to either book a hotel or rent an Airbnb. What do you look for? 99% of what we're looking for is simply the photographs. If something about those photographs doesn't look good, we don't give it a second thought, we instantly move on. 
If you wanna sell your space for more money or rent it out for a higher nightly rate, the photographs are what matter. So the purpose of this rental property was to make money and I'm really excited to do that and it was nice to be able to save money up front by taking my own photos. Initially, I didn't think I was gonna be very good at it, but if you just know some simple tricks with photography, you can really make your property stand out and that's gonna make a big difference in your listing. So our next shot is gonna be of this entryway. It's a pretty grand entryway and one of the coolest features of this house. But what is gonna be the best angle to get this? And I think you'll agree with me that looking at these photographs, the best angle is going to be looking back towards the front door. So what I like about this shot is that you've got lots of leading lines, all of the wainscoting in the walls here sort of pull you through and you see all of the amazing details of the stair. And I think we can add some flash and practical light to make a really nice photograph without too much effort on location. Now every tutorial that we've made with Mike Kelly in the past has been made for professional photographers, but this is the first tutorial where Mike starts at the very bottom level. Even if you're not a hobbyist, you are going to be able to follow along and do this. Mike's going to tell you which gear you should buy, where to place your camera, the camera settings, and then he's going to tell you where to bring those files afterwards into post-processing so that you can edit the shots and get awesome looking pictures as quickly and as easily as possible. In this tutorial, we're gonna to go to three locations. Our first location is a beautiful house in Charleston, South Carolina, overlooking marshes and the ocean. Here, we're gonna just introduce the simplest techniques. I'm gonna show you how these cameras work, what settings to use, where to put the camera, and how to do a little bit of light styling to make things look their best. The second location is a gorgeous home in the woods, and we're gonna add a little bit of complexity by adding wireless flash to our images. This is gonna add a little bit of professional polish and solve a bunch of problems that you face pretty frequently in less than perfect homes. Maybe they're too dark or they're too bright and you've gotta tame the exterior or interior light to get a perfectly balanced image. Once you do it a couple times, it's not that intimidating. At the third home, you're gonna follow along with me on a full shoot. We're gonna deliver about 30 images. We're gonna photograph every room in this house and you're gonna see exactly as I do it as a professional. I'm gonna use the same equipment and techniques that I taught you and you'll see the results I get in real time as I make them. We're gonna dissect the entire shoot so you know it's important that you don't miss a hero shot and that you nail those important interiors like the kitchen, living room, and master bedroom. Not only are the cameras going to follow me throughout the entire shoot so you can see the exact techniques I'm using, the cool thing is we're also going to give you all the files from all three homes exactly as they come off the camera. You can follow along click for click and understand exactly what I'm doing to give my images that final polish in post-production. The thing that makes a twilight look so amazing is the interior glow from those tungsten lights matches the exposure of the interior. And not only can you see outside with, sometimes you get some really cool sunset colors, but you can also see into the house. But the unfortunate thing about them is it's really only a 10 to 15 minute window in which you can make them happen. So we're out here a little bit early and I'm just gonna keep shooting through twilight to show you how the light changes. And then you can decide what kind of flavor of twilight you like. For those of you who may not consider themselves artistic, I'm gonna show you what makes a good picture and how to create one. Then we're gonna go one step further and I'm gonna show you how to add a little bit of professional polish in post-production using very simple, readily available software. And this could not be any easier. I wanna replace the sky give this a little bit more of like a happy feeling rather than this scary house on the hill type of thing. So I'm gonna go to edit, sky replacement. Photoshop has this crazy artificial intelligence algorithm that will allow you to swap in a sky. So let's try this and see how that looks. See, that looks, that looks like way too much, right? That looks pretty good. And there's a few sliders I can play with here. I'm gonna go ahead and say, there is our final image. I'm liking that a lot. So this tutorial is a digital download and as soon as you pay, you can begin downloading and watching in the comfort of your own home. If you're not satisfied for any reason with what you've learned or the images you've created, we'll give you a full refund. We are that proud of this product and guarantee it will absolutely help you create better images. Now you might be watching this video right now trying to decide if you should hire a professional photographer or maybe you could learn enough to do it yourself and that's what this tutorial is for. I bet for the price of this tutorial, you could probably save money on your very first job that you did yourself. But if you ever shoot spaces more than once, this thing is definitely going to pay for itself. Photography does not have to be difficult, nor does it have to be expensive. We wanna make this as simple and easy to follow for you as possible. Whether you're using an iPhone or a professional camera on a tripod, you'll find tons of relevant information in this tutorial to improving your images of home. 
If you're a photographer who wants to take real estate photos or you've never picked up a camera before and you're interested in getting into real estate photography, you're going to absolutely love this tutorial.